the story of science, changing man's way of life in our time. In a famous children's story, one remembers the small boy who walked the earth in seven league boots, covering miles with each stride. At the General Electric Company's Research and Development Center near Schenectady, New York, where anything that man or child might imagine is not considered impossible, one may witness a scientific endeavor to convert a man's legs into those of a giant. On a platform inside the cab of this walking truck, the operator goes through the motions of walking. And the truck, on its 10-foot legs, duplicates his motions. Quickly, one sees important uses for the walking truck in transporting loads where wheels cannot go, over barriers and rough terrain, in soft soil and sand, or through shallow water or marshland. In a related project, the scientists are seeking to augment man's strength in addition to his stride. This balance machine, manipulated by the touch of a child, lifts a heavy weight. The machine duplicates the mechanical motion of the hand in hammering nails, improving on human accuracy. Operated by a human hand, which is directed by the human brain, the balance machine possesses not only strength and accuracy, but delicate sensitivity. It touches the egg so gently, the shell does not break. But sometimes one wishes to break an egg. Here we see the electrically powered machine built into the form of a human skeleton. The skeleton is a system of servo mechanisms and control linkages which can be operated by levers. Inside this mechanical skeleton, a human being endows it with the intelligence of his own brain and with the human faculties of sight, hearing, touch, and so forth. The machine, in turn, endows the man with the strength of a giant. The machine is not a mindless robot operated by remote control instruments. It is an augmented man. Inside the General Electric Research Laboratory, the MAN augmentation program is only one among hundreds of scientific research projects being conducted simultaneously by a large international staff of professional scientists supported by hundreds of laboratory assistants, technicians and workmen. In the United States, scientific research has assumed proportions of a huge industry in itself. While the national government is the chief sponsor of scientific research and development in its own agencies and in universities, large private industrial companies, such as General Electric, spend hundreds of millions of dollars of their own funds annually for scientific research. As might be expected, some industrial research is to improve products that the company manufactures for sale. This water table, for example, allows engineers to study what actually happens inside large GE-made turbines that produce electricity in power plants. The water flowing past an open valve simulates the steam vapor inside a turbine. The field of electronics provides a good example of what is accomplished through research that is directed at the improvement of a manufactured product. In this demonstration, we see three electronic circuits that perform an identical function. Twelve years ago, the circuit consisted of vacuum tubes and a cluster of capacitors and resistors. Eight years ago, small permanent transistors had replaced the bulky, undependable vacuum tubes. Today, the entire circuit is completely integrated into a tiny solid-state conductor. Here it is shown in comparison with the electronic circuit of 1954. The miniaturization of electronic circuits into these tiny components, which give reliable performance amidst severe heat and cold, 
vibration, twist and spin, impact shock and radiation exposure has made possible our new era of computers, space exploration and high speed communications. It is quite logical that industrial science research should be directed at the improvement of manufactured products. But people are often surprised to discover that many scientists who are employed by private companies devote their full time, year after year, to experiments that have no practical purpose. Dozens of laboratories within the GE research installation resemble university classrooms where scholars and mathematicians discuss subjects and equations that are far removed from the practicalities of industry. These scientists are given the same status and the same monetary support for their basic research as other scientists working on projects that will have immediate application and predictable benefits for the company. To appreciate the reason for this costly backing of research that is seemingly pointless, one must realize, as GE and other companies realize, that the truly great discoveries of science, the fundamental breakthroughs, have most often resulted from scientific research that had no specific or practical goal. The scientist who is left free to pursue the truths of nature, no matter where his research may lead, and who is free to fail time and time again without criticism, may in the end come to a finding. This finding may be valuable immediately, eventually, or not at all. At General Electric, a group of scientists discovered a way to change the molecular structure of a plastic material, giving the plastic a new toughness and flexibility. This resulted in a line of plastic products that could replace metal pipes, rods, and many other items of everyday use. A different research project involving plastics produced a synthetic plastic material that will conduct electricity instead of resisting it. This phenomenon, although interesting, has only minor application at the present time. This tiny particle, whose size can be seen in comparison with a small coin, is a bearing that might become loose or damaged in a large motor. If so, that part of the motor, when in operation, would produce a sound with just a shade of difference from its characteristic sound when functioning normally. GE scientists, using small model motors, have developed a technique called mechanical signature analysis, which detects through a sensor any unusual sound, no matter how small, that may identify a malfunction within the motor or a warning sound that something may soon go wrong. Using data reduction techniques from the hash of noises indicated on the oscilloscope, scientists who must know motor mechanics are able to inspect the condition of a large motor without tearing it down for visual inspection. Whether he serves his government, or a university, or an industrial company, the scientist eventually serves the people.